Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about a very controversial topic which is parabens. I am a cosmetic chemist, a biochemist, and a business consultant for skincare startups. So we are definitely going to take a deep dive into this topic and talk about what they are, are they safe, should you be avoiding them or using them. We're just going to go through all of the concerns, common questions that people have about parabens, but we are going to go at it from a science-backed, evidence-based uh, point of view, which is the one that I have. So if you are afraid of parabens or you're curious about them or you've heard this, you know, paraben-free claim all over the place, then definitely this is a video for you to watch. Um, I hope that you learn a lot and we can become better educated about parabens in general together. Now, please do not mind my voice. I am sick, so I'm a little nasally, more nasally than normal. All right, let's start things off with what are parabens and why are they even used in cosmetics in the first place? So parabens are a class of synthetic preservatives that are used in personal care products to prevent the growth of uh, back harmful bacteria, fungi, mold, yeast, and other microorganisms that can infect or be in our skincare products and can grow in our skincare products. And they work by inhibiting the growth or affecting the reproduction of these organisms, microorganisms. And that really helps maintain the quality and the safety of products over time so that even if they are contaminated, those microorganisms cannot grow and it prevents, you know, anything harmful from being in our skincare products. So how they actually work is quite interesting. Uh, parabens are effective preservatives because they actually can penetrate the cell walls of these microorganisms and really inhibit their ability to grow and reproduce. So they have a very targeted mechanism of working and that's why they are so, so effective at you know preserving personal care products. And specifically, parabens act as antimicrobial agents by binding to and inhibiting the enzymes that are essential for growth and for replication. And so because they inhibit these enzymes, they essentially are just <laughs> top notch at inhibiting the growth um, of these microorganisms, microorganisms in our products. So the big question at large is, are parabens safe? Parabens are considered safe to use in cosmetics when they fall within the range established by regulatory bodies such as the EU and the FDA. And numerous studies have been conducted on parabens and the general consensus uh, in the scientific community is that they are considered safe in cosmetics when used under these restrictions. To get kind of into some studies, and I'll have some studies linked below so you can look at your own research, but a review published in the International Journal of Toxicology in 2008 concluded that parabens are safe for use in cosmetics at the levels typically used based on extensive toxicology and clinical data. In 2011, the European Commission Scientific Committee on Consumer Safety, also known as the SCCS, conducted a comprehensive risk assessment of parabens and concluded that they are safe for use in cosmetic products at the maximum authorized concentrations. A study published in the Journal of Applied Toxicology in 2015 evaluated the safety of parabens and their metabolites in human breast tissue and found no evidence to support the claim that they contribute to the development of breast cancer. The US Food and Drug Administration also affirmed the safety of parabens and cosmetics, stating that they are safe at the levels used in products on the market. And these are just a few examples, but there is a wealth of knowledge that backs up the safety of parabens. It is one of the most well-studied uh, ingredients. So a lot of people claim that, oh, these more natural preservatives are better. But all that is, is that those natural preservatives are less studied and we don't know as much about them. So people assume that because we know less about them, they're safer. And really that's not true. We actually don't have a lot of data on preservative alternatives, um, some some of them anyways. So parabens, we have all this data because they're, they are, the most studied preservative uh, type out of all of them. So we actually do have a lot of data to back up their safety. So another question might be, do all cosmetics contain parabens? And the answer is no, a lot of skincare products these days do not contain parabens. So if you want to avoid them for whatever reason it is, just know that they are safe if you come across them, but you can definitely find alternatives if you still don't want to, uh, based on your personal preference. But those decisions to not use them is not founded on science because the science backs up that they actually are safe to use. If parabens are considered safe, then why do some companies avoid using them in their products? A lot of companies avoid parabens because of consumer perception and kind of, you know, the fear mongering in within the industry about parabens. A lot of companies still do use them though, actually, and they are 
considered safe and they're really effective con uh, preservatives. The other thing is they're some of the least allergenic preservatives on the market. A lot of these natural preservative alternatives are quite allergenic on the skin. So parabens have just been used for so long. We have so much data and we know that they are safe and at the at the concentrations that are that they are found in and that they have very little to no allergic component. So some alternative preservatives that have been used instead of parabens include ingredients like benzalkonium chloride, phenoxyethanol, and sodium benzoate. It really depends on the formula. Some preservatives are broad spectrum, some are not, and sometimes you have to use a combination of a lot of different preservatives to kind of get the same effect as a paraben, which uh, happens very often. So have any studies linked the use of parabens to health concerns? While some studies have raised concerns about parabens, the majority of scientific evidence concludes that they are very safe to use in the way that they are used in cosmetics, and no study to date has conclusively linked parabens to any health concerns. Now let's talk about parabens um, and their use during pregnancy. While parabens are considered safe to use in cosmetics within their um, within the regulatory guidelines, some pregnant women may want to avoid them out of an abundance of caution. If you think about something like retinol, which you are not supposed to use during pregnancy because it does affect fetal development, um, you know that's a pretty strong effect for that to happen. And there's no conclusive study if parabens affect fetal development, but if you want to be, you know, very cautious, you can definitely avoid them. But retinol, something that does affect fetal development, we consider like a golden skincare ingredient, right? Like everyone uses it. It's touted to be the best anti-aging ingredient on the market, and it actually does affect fetal development. So you cannot use it when you're pregnant. That's pretty powerful. And then we look at something like parabens that actually doesn't have the evidence to back up any changes on fetal development and we're considering it like a horrible thing. <laughs> My dishwasher is done. So just keep that in mind. Um, when you're pregnant, you can avoid whatever you wanna avoid, but um, definitely avoid the things like retinol that you should be avoiding, any vit vitamin A products. Um, some people avoid salicylic acid, etc. Just do what feels right if you're pregnant. But actually the American College of Obs Obstetricians and gynecologists states there's no convincing evidence linking the use of cosmetics containing parabens with adverse pregnancy outcomes and that women should not be overly concerned with normal use of cosmetics containing parabens. So that's from the OBGYN um, or the ACA, ACOG, American College of Obstet Obstetricians and Gynecologists. So ultimately it's up to each individual what they feel uh, to do with their pregnancy, but there's been no major concerns with uh, parabens during pregnancy. So the FDA has not restricted or banned any parabens in cosmetics, but the EU actually has, out of, out of an abundance of caution, it has banned isopropyl paraben, isobutyl paraben, phenyl paraben, benzyl paraben, and pentyl paraben. And it has just set concentration limits for um, methyl paraben, ethyl paraben, and then um, it has concentration limits and then also it's not supposed to be used on the nappy area of children under the age of three and that includes butyl paraben and propyl paraben. So there is some restriction uh, on the parabens in the EU and there is some banning, but the ones that are still used in the EU, even though they have some concentration limits, which is very normal for preservatives to have concentration limits, um, those are those again, the ones that are still allowed in the EU are methylparaben, ethylparaben, butylparaben, and propylparaben. And recently in 2020, the CIR, which is the Cosmetic Ingredient Review Panel, published a study saying amended safety assessments of parabens as used in cosmetics. And they did find that 20 of the 21 parabens included in the report are safe in cosmetics in the present practices of use and concentrations described in the safety assessment when the sum of the total parabens in any given formulation does not exceed 0.8% which is, um, you know, how they're typically used. So they're constantly reassessing this and they've found that they are all safe except for benzyl paraben. So as someone that values scientific evidence over fear mongering, I just wanted to provide you with all of the information that really is out there on parabens um, without any kind of bias. Like I'm not trying to sell you a natural product. I'm not trying to sell you a product with parabens either. This is just for your information. So. You can do your own research and decide, but the top regulatory bodies in the world, like the SEC, 
S and the CIR, um, you know, have been reviewing these ingredients for decades and there's a lot of data to back up that they are safe for using cosmetics within the, you know, normally used amounts that is required for a preservative. You know, we don't need 10% of our preservatives. Generally, it falls anywhere between, um, you know, 0.1 to 1% depending on the preservative. That's a huge generalization, but you know, this is not small amounts. This is not large amounts of parabens that we're actually putting on our skin. And they take that into consideration, the dose and the frequency of use and everything. So the majority of evidence shows that they are not harmful to human health when they're used in the appropriate way as they are in cosmetics. So if you do see a product that contains parabens, do not be afraid. Rest assured, it has been thoroughly, thoroughly evaluated for its safety and its efficacy. And there's a reason why that paraben is in there. Um, it is in there to make the product better, not worse. And it is perfectly safe to use. So I know that it was a lot, a lot of information. And you know, if you want to avoid parabens just because you want to, then go for it. But I'm just laying out all the information that I have on parabens that is out there in the scientific community, out there in you know the formulation world of people that are actually making these products that you use. Um, you know, parabens are not evil. They're not out to get you and they do serve a purpose, uh, a really important purpose in cosmetics. There is alternatives, so if you don't, feel comfortable using them, then definitely don't, but you don't have to be afraid of them. So that is just a lot of information about, uh, you know, paraben safety, cosmetic chemistry, and everything. If you do have any questions about anything that I mentioned, please leave them down in the comments below and I will answer them. Um, like I said, I'm gonna leave some resources down in the comment or in the description box so you can do your own reading and educate yourself um, and look at the kind of summary of data that has been done. Um, over decades and like lots of research done recently as well. So, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it educational. I am gonna put together a ton of these type of videos, very informational. So if you did enjoy this type of content, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already, please do subscribe to my channel. It just helps me um, know that you guys are interested in what I'm putting out there. All right, thank you so much for hanging out with me and talking about cosmetic chemistry. I will see you guys in my next video.